Morning guys, how you all doing? All good, I hope. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to the Norfolk Fishing Channel. Today I'm just uh, out on the beach. It's now, it's coming up to half past four. We're out at Lower Stoft and Nest Point. First time I've ever been here. I've seen a few fish coming out on Facebook. It looks like it's fishing well, so the expectations are high. But, you know, that's sea fishing. Um, there's also quite a lot of reports of people blanking, so it's one of them things, but... We're going to have a good session today. Um, I've got plenty of bait. I've got 100 worms, 100 lugworm. I've got squid, ma uh, fresh mackerel, fresh herring, a few other bits and pieces. Um, I'll show you later on. And just literally just got down here in the car park. Uh, the bird's eye factory is literally opposite to me on the right. I'll quickly show you around. Which is behind me there. There's the factory there. I've got the slip waiter in front of me. I'm just going to have a walk up and have a look. I'm in no rush. I've got all day. I'm off for a week at Easter, so don't go back until next Thursday. So I'm going to get set up. I'm probably going to set two rods up to start with. Um, a pulley rig with a panel hook on it. 40 pound um, hook length. And a 3-0 Mustad Viking and a 2-0 sort of bait holder style. Um, with two or three lugworm on there and a bit of squid wrap, get that cast out. I've seen it's quite rocky. Um, I know there's like a, they say don't go beyond the few, I've watched a few videos because I've never fished here before to try and get a bit of insight. Um, from what I heard, don't go beyond or much past the breakers. Further out you go, there's a the old seawall and way beyond that is another the original seawall but yeah from what I see it's quite rocky and you've got to get up a steep ledge so I'm just keep rigs simple um, and I'll probably go for I'll have, it's gonna be high tide uh, sorry low tide at six o'clock so it gives me an hour to set up I can have a good look at the water situation where I'm fishing if there's any potential snags coming to high water um, so that's why I want to get down here now. I'll fish it on the flood. It's hot, uh, high tide at half past 12 in the afternoon. So I'll probably give it an hour into the ebb. And then uh, see how things are going. <coughs> but I've got all day. No one's to get back. No one's to tomorrow. So see you down there in a minute. Once I get set up. I'm just literally fishing behind the back of bird's eye and now it's low water there's this like a little spit there this was used to be the beach but I can see this is about the closest I can get I mean obviously further up you've got a, another wall breaker there I've got a little bit here I've got to avoid that's why I've sort of set here I can cast in the middle channel there. I'll see what the tide's like. But down here is sort of like about the clearest place I've got if I get anything to bring it up and over. But you never know what's out there. So I thought simple rig and we'll just uh, feed our way into it. So I'll get this wazzed out. Yeah I'm just in the minute middle of a uh, sort of setting up. I'll just quickly set the big rod up. Well I'll call it a big rod. 
just going to do a simple pulley rig. Just a simple pulley or a six ounce gripper. Got a 3 0 to 2 0 on here. Three, uh, three lug worms and a bit of squid. Just going to bind this on. Make sure this drag is done up. The leader knots right at the back of the spool. I'm not going to go too far. It looks like it's automatically pulling right to left. I'm just going to time the cast, I don't want to leave it in too long, I'm going to give it 10-15 minutes and just check the sort of state of how things are. Gonna loosen this clutch off of it just in case. Alright, I'm gonna go get the other rod set up. It might be a bit tight in here. I'm gonna just gonna go for a one up, one down clip down rig. And just go with worms. I'm gonna get that set up. Get the other camel gear set up and all the rest of it. Even if it's a case of just uh, fishing with one rod, but having two set up, and then I can just reel one in. See what's working, whether they just want the worms or a bigger bait or just switch and change then. Gives me a bit more options. We've got a bit of a bite already, just halfway through setting up the other rod. Just put the knots here, just gonna wind this clutch up a bit. There's a few, few good shakes on there. Bang. Might be a spear whiting or something. Not really a strikeable bite at the minute. Got a few little rattles that are going to bring it in, I think. It might be on. It's cast out again. The bait looks all right. Let's freshen it up a bit. The worms are gone. The worms are gone, so. Yeah, they've been munched. There's only about half a one left out of three, so. We'll get another wrap on, I think. Uh, squid seems to be holding it, just protecting a little bit more.
just going to go with three lug worms to start with. Let's get this other one set up. I'm not sure if that's just a gentle bounce of the, the waves or not, but they look they don't look like sharp rattles, but uh, just little pull downs. But maybe because it's so deep out there, I don't know, I and mean, just probably the way the, the tide's ebbing and flowing. Okay, I've quickly set up the other rod, I haven't cast it in yet. I've just got my uh, Lenafe long cast 14 foot beach caster rod, up to 250 gram. That's with the Shakespeare Salt XT 7000 reel. I've got uh, 60 pound H Land Hercules Grey. I've got a 60 pound shock leader on there, ASIO shock leader. I've got a 70 pound rig body. I'm going to try, a bit, a bit risky, but I've got a three up, but they're on red, very short snoods. Three up and a one down rig. Ties not moving around. I'm just going to go all out worm on this one, sort of a bit of a scratch and bait. It's on 25 pound snoods and size one Mustad Vikings, one single lug worm, tipped with a tiny bit of squid, and the same on the bottom. The right hand rod is my Lenafe Blue Ocean, it's a lot heavier rod. Um, Shakespeare Salt, 7000 mil, same line and shock leader. Just stepped it up to 80 pound rib body on there. That's for 40 pound hook length. And as I say, a 3 3 0 Mustard Viking and a 2 0 bait holder style hook um, with three lug worms on there. But the bouncer and the rattling stopped, so I assume the, the lug of gods. So I'm going to bring that one in in a second and to get this one cast out. I was just changing the battery on the GoPro. It's coming up to 6 o'clock. <clears throat> Left hand rod, it's rattling away. There was two whited on, but I lost one on that wall there, so it's a bit. Uh, we haven't blanked, so maybe they are a bit closer in, but I'm just going to stick with the big rod further out with a big bait, and I'll just give this one the gentle lob off the end of the point there. There's plenty of birds working along where the uh, end of the that spit is or whatever it is. So we get this unhooked. Well we ain't blanked. Just want something a little bit bigger than that. So there were two on, one on the top snood. It's nicely hooked as well. I think the short snoods help hooking, especially with the uh, I love these uh <coughs> Size one Mustad Vikings, so really, really strong, but small hooks, really nice, big, sharp point, quite a nice barb on it. As I said, it's got one single lug worm on there, tipped with a tiny bit of squid, just a little square, little fingernail sort of size, just to help hook on the cast. Right, this looks cast in. I've got my camera down there on the floor, just in the middle of changing the back to and the rock tip is flying away. The bird's working on along there, I've got the guy just off the edge of the spit there, on the end of the slip leg. It's on. <laughs> I'm not going to go uh, too far with this one. Probably going to go to the left.
two. Seems a bit closer in. Well, the first time I've been here, I've got to say, you know, it's a lovely place. Straight off the back, back it, your car's behind you. It's a nice wall. You're not getting sand everywhere. On a hard surface. Loads of features. I was just thinking, the last three days has been really really windy it's probably settling down a bit yesterday and the uh, sea's flat calm at the minute so maybe it was a bit you know it would have been a better choice oh hang on a minute got a bit of a bang on there better choice to come yesterday and just brave the wind because the bigger fish seem to like a little bit of kick on the water a bit of but I mean, hopefully, you know, it's a nice bit of colour in it and it should be clearing up. So, you know, after two or three days of high winds and storm, that's sort of churned up all the bottom of the seabed and nicely settling now for fish to come along and start having a munch and see what's, you know, been kicked up. So, we've got a few bangs on here. Just wait for a big slam down on that one there really. though. It's gonna be, you know, it's got decent bait on there. It's gonna be think it'd be a slam down and a knock, you know, it should be just a slack liner. You know, the tip will go back, spring back, and then you'll get slack line it with a chip the lead out. There's a lot of birds working in front of me. Not that one. <laughs> Although I do hear them, there's a fair few of them in lower stuff. There's a guy just fishing down there, off the end of a slip, and it's like another concrete car parking bit down there. I just noticed there's obviously the two boys there, so there must be a channel out where it's deeper there, so that might be a good. So I keep talking to you with my bloody back turns rude. Yeah, there's a deep channel there, obviously where the boats go in and out, so it might be a good uh, place to fish for in future next time I come down. But it's all free parking along here. And it's nice and warm. It did say yesterday. That's why I was a bit peed. It did, um, uh, with the wind and everything, it was like 40, 50 kilometers an hour gusting the last couple of days. And, but it was dry and I looked at the weather, thought, oh, Saturday, Sunday is going to be dry. And then I looked at yesterday afternoon, late afternoon, and it changed, didn't it? <laughs> the Met Office, what do they do? What do the Met Office do? Come on, it's not hard to get 
12 hour forecast right is it and all of all of a sudden yesterday it just changed the rain so. How are you guys doing anyway? Anyone been out? I know it's close season now. If you course fish, we've got three months of uh, not going. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn you around because I can keep an eye on my rods then. Put you down there. That's better. You can look at the faction. But uh, yeah, we've got, we've got three months now with a close season and uh, so you can either fill your boots with commercial carp fishing or go down commercial and a bit of bream and just general course fishing or beach fishing or is there anything else anything else you guys are up to let me know if you're doing anything different so, not a breath of wind so I'm going to keep a close eye on the time because it's about Five ten past six now. I'm going to bring this one in. I might put a Lenny Kravitz on, uh, which I've made up. That's the old Kravitz, the old Lenny Kravitz. Kravitz. <laughs> Poor joke, I know. Um, and just sit and wait. Then I think. But being, it's, it's, I don't know if you do, I'm, you know, last two days <clears throat> with the weather and that, and I just jobbed on yesterday, sorting the fishing gear out, giving it the rods a good clean, just checking everything, checking the leader knots, changing the leaders, going for all my rigs, making sure everything's top knots for the day, and everything's ready, which I'm glad I did yesterday, but if I was ever unemployed or for some reason couldn't work, I'd go out on the rain. I hate being in the house, I hate being in the house. I've got to get out for an hour or two for a walk, go around the city, a bit of window shopping, clean a car, anything. Just to sit there all day long, no, I'd, be, I'd, go, I'd go bonkers, man. <laughs> I've got to be out. I've got to be working. Or, or, you know, or I've got to be out fishing. <laughs> the latter would be better. If I won the lottery and uh, had the money, yeah, I'd have my own boat. I'm not one of these people who oh, I want a big mansion and a big Rolls Royce and a big car. No, I'm quite... quite oh, I've got a bite on the other one. Sod's door, isn't it? There's a little rattle there. That one's doing all the business. So I think what I'll do is the next cast on the big rod does not go quite as far. He says with a big bite on his right hand. Well, got big bites on everyone. Definitely had a bite there. I want this, I want this right one to really go. I'm not going to keep striking it, little plucks and things, but it needs to really go. Okay, you guys, having a knock on both sort of rods. Let's have the best white in the day. Nice big fat chunky white in. Nice and hooked right at the bottom. Short snoods are definitely helping. It's the way, and I think once they take it, these hooks are really nailing them on these hooks. I might just crush the barb a touch because it's quite hard to get unhooked. So, 
like the crusher barb and I got flies there. Yeah. So you crush a barb and then you got three to move it. That'll do. Mighty number four. Nice looking fish. Shame we weren't a bit bigger. That's not quite a keeper, I think. I've just measured it, it's 28 and a half. So, I've got to give it a stick on measure. A couple of months ago, and it says uh, white in 27. So, that would have been a keeper, but for me, I like them over 30. I mean, 27 is too, yeah, unless it's really fat and chunky. Yeah. If, it's, if it's 30 or above, I'll take it. Okay, I just brought the big rod in. It's absolutely stripped, not, not a lot left, a tiny bit of squid. So what I thought I'd do is, I've got a whole shell on prawn or a whole crevette. Head on, shell on and everything. It's got some squid. Now let's put it on a panel rig. We've got the hooks well proud. So let's get this in. I'll give it half an hour on this and see if it attracts anything. Let's get it out. I'm not going to go quite as far, it's starting to uh, flood now. That's where I want it, just off the end of the breaker. What I'm doing is, we're casting it in. Just making sure I don't get snagged on this inside ledge. But what I'm doing is, not tightening down to it. I wanna make sure there's a little bow forming. So if there's any tide, it's gonna pull that grip lead into the sand. I'll give it a minute. Let it grip in, let the hook length straighten out, and then I'll just tighten down to it, loosen the clutch up. <coughs> okay, I'm just putting another rig. I've just done a two up rig. Put a five ounce pyramid lead. I might just cast this one where I am and bring this one a bit closer. I don't want to get snagged. Yeah, I'm going to bring this one a bit closer. I don't want to get snagged on that snag again. But the two up seems to be doing the business. There's plenty of people turning up now. One, two, three, four, five, six down there. So they must be uh, all turning up. That's coming up to six o'clock. The left hand rod's doing all the business at the minute. Plenty of white and close in on lug, lug worm and tip of the tiniest bit of squid. But uh, we'll get this back in. I've got a few knocks on the big rod, but I think that's a small fish. But I've just gone for sort of like three lug worms and a nice strip of squid wrap on that one. So we'll get this back. We're catching. We just need to get bigger. It's been greedy now. 
Yeah, a fair few rods out there now. Probably got about seven o'clock, gonna go check the time, have a coffee, get the gear sorted out, sit and chill, and then uh, I'll get back to you. But obviously they know more than I do, so, you know, obviously the start of the flood to high tides might be a, a good time. Yeah, it's lovely. The first time I've been here, there's loads of sailing boats coming out, loads of charter boats, obviously commercial boats. Busy hub, obviously for the factory here as well. Just loosen the clutch off. That one really did whack down and bang. Uh, I'm not sure what it was, but the, the, the Real was screaming a bit. I don't think it was massive. Probably a really good decent white or something, but got caught on that thing down there. Or I don't know if it's the, the lead or the bottom hook got snagged on there. Just couldn't get it up in time. There was a bit of weight on it. Yeah, what I've just done is I've had three good bites on there. One of them had absolutely slammed down. Um, I missed all three of them. One of the hooks don't feel too sharp and the, and the snoods are too long. Um, I'm getting the bite still on that one. So I've just done what was on the original one before I lost it. I so put the size one Vikings, must add Viking hooks on. Shorten the hooks. Uh, so I've got about six to eight inch hook length. That's cast out. If I get a bite and we get a fish, even if we do get a fish, I'm going to change the hook length. Shorten them off. I'm just not getting the hookups on that one at the minute whether it's the hooks are a bit blunt or the snoods are a bit too long. I think with the shorter snood, when the fish take the bait, it hooks itself against the weight of the, with the five ounce weight. But at the minute, it's sort of like doing me. So. I'm gonna bring this one in now, but nothing on the king prawn. And to go back to lugworm and squid. Bit of a rattle on there, look. It's a little tremble there. What I've done as well now is I've locked up the uh, drag tight. There's a couple of times pick it up and clutch is going. So I've got the drag tight, I've got one of my bungees, go around a couple of pins on the on my wheels, on my barrow, and just over the bail arm. So just enables me to pick it up and unclip it quickly and straight in. I haven't got to worry about tightening up the drag all the time. Okay, it's ten past eight. I just bought this in because I'm gonna change the snoods on it. Uh, the tiniest little whiting on there, I didn't even know it was on. I wasn't even giving a rattle of anything, so I think it's probably just swimming round and round in circles with the long snood. It's not even registering. So I'm going to do what I said, I've got them set up. I'm going to cut these off, tie on fresh hooks, short snood, and we'll get them back in. It's biting number six. That's the smallest one of the day, tiny. Not even going to bother uh, measuring that one. Go back. Yeah, I've done what I said I was going to do. I put three lugworm and squid back on the big bait, cast that out. I've just changed the snoods, a lot shorter. Back on the size, one mustad Viking hooks. You just know as soon as you put a, try and thread a worm on, it's a good sharp hook. The other ones was bit blunt I think. So I'll get this cast out. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hang about today, I'm not gonna just sit there and wait for something to happen. I'm gonna try and keep busy, make something happen.
There you are. Yeah, well, so we were in with fishing. It's well on the flood now. I can see by the uh, state of the tide behind me. There's plenty of nice folks out today. But, uh, those breakers go along to this wall and now disappeared. You can tell it's getting, well, it's only, it's only quarter past eight, but still got four hours before high tide. I'm feeling these walls, it's still wet and here I expect, well, yesterday, obviously with the wind and that would have been a lot uh, rougher, but at least, at least, expect the uh, water to get up beyond the, down there there's another little ledge you can't see it so you have to get over that ledge you try and get your lead up you have to wind really fast get your lead up on the surface if you can and when you get to this bit, wind down so you've got enough line in, it's short enough, so if you just yank it up over this bit down in, easier said than done, especially that, that one there. There's a decent fish on, you've got a bit of weight. Um, yeah, it's 50 50, hit and miss. It's pot luck, right? I was speaking to a guy when it first got down here. He fishes it regularly, he was a local. Oh, and uh, it, he just said, yeah, it's pot luck whether you get, if you get a decent fish, that's the, that's the easy bit, it's getting it out. There you go, I was having a knock on both sort of rods. Just had the best whiting of the day. Nice big fat chunky whiting. Nicely hooked right at the bottom. Short snoods are definitely helping with the weight, and I think once they take it, these hooks are really nailing them on these hooks. They might just crush the bar a touch because they're quite hard to get unhooked. So I might just crush the barb, and I've got the pliers there. So if you crush the barb, then you've got risk of losing it. So. I'll do. Whitey number four. Measure it, 28 and a half. So, I got given a stick on measure a couple of months ago, and it says uh, white in 27. So, that would have been a keeper, but for me, I like them over 30. I mean, 27 is too, uh, unless it's really fat, chunky. Uh, if, it's, if it's 30 or above, I'll take it. If it was me, I'd increase all them size limits because uh, some of them are just pathetic, I think, for dabs and whiting and that. You know, 27 centimetres is nothing. By the time you take the head off, gut it, and you've got a couple of fish fingers, and that's about it. So it's half eight. I'll just shorten those snoods off, like I said. Another whiting. You really see the bites on the braid. That's, again, look. Put right in the bottom lip. I think they hook them themselves against the weight. So, plan paid off. The white number seven, we'll get it back out. I was just right in the middle of a Sos Law. Again, changing the GoPro battery. 
we get by. Well, just cast out. I've just do, moved the gear, sorted myself out, put my box right in the middle of both rods. I can just sit and watch both rods at the same time. I just wanted to say, I don't know if I said it already, but uh, massive thanks to Julian. Um, saw him on Facebook advertising worms. He lives 15 minutes from where I am. It was a quick drive out yesterday. Picked up a hundred worms, 20 quid. I'll leave a link in the video. Massive thanks. You know, it's nice to have somewhere within reasonable driving distance from Norwich. I can go and get fresh bait. They're working at the minute, getting plenty of bites. So massive thanks, Julian. I shall be uh, buying more bait off you more frequently, that's for sure. Just saves me. You know, I used to go to Stanham, or you can you can order them online, but it's a hassle. But yeah, 15 minutes drive when you want fresh bait. He's out the day before pumping them. Saves me driving all the way to Galston, or yeah, I like to go fishing early in the morning, but the shop don't open until nine, so. It's all a bit of a hassle from Norwich. None of the tackle shops I know of um, do lugworm, ragworm, not, not live anyway. So yeah, cheers buddy. Uh, right in front of me there, it's Mr Seal just popped his head up. So he's swimming along the line where I'm sort of casting, not on the end of the groin, or wherever it is. No walkway by the look of it, wooden posts. And that's what I saw on the video last night. People say, don't go past, you know, don't for, as far as the post is, as far as you want to go out. But I've noticed it does drop off, you know, cast a bit too short and it's quite shallow. Go just a little bit forward to where the end of the point is, growing, and uh, it just drops off nicely. It's a nice, deep gully. Okay, well, I'm sitting waiting. I thought I'd just make up a wrap. I'm going to do a mussel, lugworm, and squid wrap. So I've just got four mussels on the bait and needle. Mm. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Must be. We've got days fishing. I've had seven or eight already, so it's not too bad. But we're out, that's the main thing. That's very dumpy, though. It's good for that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good fishing. So. Is it competition today? No, just a lot, obviously a lot of people out. Just obviously the fish is good at... You said it's got a massive cod. Yeah, yeah, I saw it on Facebook yesterday. It's a couple of cod coming out, so... Yeah, sorry about that. So, yeah, I'm just going to get the lugworm. Just put it on the end so I can fold it over. Just going to give it a light wrap. any excess, I'm just going to fold it back over. And it's going to do the same with the squid. Got a nice strip of squid. It's going to push it through the needle. Just, just enough to get a purchase. And I'm going to go down the back and just Bind that on. And it's going to finish it with a half inch. It's going to go on the big bait, or on the big rod, shall I say. Muscle, squid, 
Allah ku hab It's not true what, about what they say about Suffolk people They're all quite uh, friendly actually <laughs> It's the Norfolk people you've got to wor worry about. They all look at you funny. I tell them I've gone over to the border to Suffolk. They go, you've got the dark lands, you are, boy. <laughs> guys it's half past nine been very quiet for the last hour on the flood I've just changed this bait over on my right hand rod I've just put the uh, four mussels lugworm and squid wrap on there just cast that out um, just same on the left one just lugworm and squid but yeah it's very quiet about one tiny little strap white in just get a Occasional, they're not even bites, I think they must be crabs coming in on the high tide, it's little clucks, little knocks, but uh, we're here all day, so it's half nine, still got three hours of the flood, so I reckon another, another hour, another hour, hour and a half, unless you start coming on the bite again, but, uh, I was just thinking it's probably a uh, not the ideal conditions today with it being flat calm for a big fish, but you never know. If you're not out, you're not fishing, there's no chance of getting one. So and if you, even if you are out and you're fishing, there's no chance of getting one, but we'll persevere, we'll keep going. I've noticed two or three people down there lost the rigs and snapped in just the same place where I did, right in, right in close as a brick wall, pillows. They're all getting snagged in there as well, so it's a case of when you wind in, you lift your leg off the bottom, just give it the big one and wind down and yank it in as fast as you can and get up your leg up to the surface as quick as you can. I was thinking about casting a you know a short short cast, but that, I think that's how I lost the other one. Cast it a little bit shorter, and if you and say if you don't get your rig up. Especially if you've got a fish on, um, good chance of losing it. But we'll, per we'll persevere. It's a nice day, flat calm, quite warm, a bit of drizzle in the air. But I was just thinking, if you come down here on a really low tide, or there's a tsunami and, and the, the waves just parted. I bet you could walk along here and get a couple of hundred rigs. <laughs> I 
you probably have enough tackle to last you a year, right? Seven or eight white in this morning. It's gone a bit quiet on the flood, but um, a couple of were in size, but you know, 28, 28 and a half. But I like them over 30. I think you're going to take them home. You want some piece of meat on it, don't you? 27 is a bit small. I know it's legal, but. Yeah, I've just put a big wrap out on here with mussel, squid, and uh, lugworms on it. On that one, I've just got two up, sort of flapper egg, just with lug worm and square. That's catching plenty of whiting on that one. I had a decent bite early on, the rod, rod slammed down, but I couldn't get the lead up in time and got caught down on this inside sort of wall or whatever it is down there. And, uh, lost the rig. But yeah, yeah, that's why I've just got pulley panel rig on that one. So. I don't know if they've lost two or three leaves already, I don't know if off. But I got down here this morning at low water, I know this is a bit of a break in the wall here. Alright, cheers mate. Yeah, it's 10 o'clock, just trying to keep busy, just wound this one in, there's a few little bits of log left on it but not a lot, so I don't know if it's getting picked off by crabs or whatever, so I just refresh that one, cast it out, just having a look around, chatting to people, there's a guy come down, he said yeah you need to get here, low water, probably in the video, and, you know, pick your spots, um, yeah that looks really good down there, on a sort of like flat walkway bit, around and have a look at it. There's three or four people fishing down there. As I say they've got the uh, two boys out there so there's just such a channel to come in and out if you are going to launch from there. I can't say a spot where you can launch from but But all looks good to me. I mean, anywhere is as good as anywhere, I think. Let's come down to the water. Make sure there's no obstacles in front here and that. You take your chances. Okay, it's 20 past 10. Not out of touch in the last hour or so. Really quiet. Refresh my baits, keep putting them out, but uh, they're not a thing. I've not even seen anything come out at all. The guy to the right has lost two rigs. It looked like he had a decent fish on. Um, his rod was bent over all the way in, and then again he got snagged on something really close in and cracked off. But uh, it's another hour and a half, oh no, two hours, sorry, it'll be a high tide. So hopefully within the next hour things will start changing. But at the minute I've seen more life at a funeral. <laughs> yeah, well we'll just keep plugging away. We've got all day, there's no rush to go home. I'll just keep busy. That's all you can do. It's half eleven. Just had a couple of little whiting. This one's a little bit better. Getting back. I've just had a recast. I've kept worm on the top snood with a uh, chip of squid and I've just put a bit of mackerel on the bottom one. Nice big bit of mackerel. I thought I'd try some fish baits. I've got fresh herring and I've got fresh mackerel, so I'll give it a go. See if we can get a dogfish or something. But what I have just seen.
Oh, cod guts. So somebody's had a cod out at some point. And obviously taking it over for their dinner. I'm going to bring that one in in a minute, check the bait. It's been out a while. Refresh it and get it cast out again. I just had a nice well, a little doggy. As on the uh, mackerel and tip the squid. Only a small one. I'm getting straight back. Okay, guys, it's quarter past twelve. I just caught in the big bait. I've had uh, a couple of white in and uh, two dogfish on the mackerel, fresh mackerel. So I bought the big one in, put a big strip of mackerel on there, bound it with a bit of squid. And just cast that out so fish bait seems to be working at the minute slowed up on the worm well, we're coming up to high tide the bites are coming on again so yeah picking up but if you're taking the fish baits I thought nice big bit of mackerel nice long bit of mackerel on the punny panel Nice bit of strip, uh, strip of squid down the back, just bound it, lashed it on. There must be about a thousand rods out down there. <laughs> Everyone in the country's come down. It's good to see. About time to push it on, it's probably about two o'clock, but it's uh, been really slow. But had a good bite and a nice big white in. I mean, that's a take of but I'm going to put it back. That's on the worm. I've got the uh, top snood worm and squid. Bottom one is on mackerel and squid. They're both up above the lead, but uh, I've just seen which one works at the minute. But uh, we'll get it back. About number 12. But I thought, uh, I'm off for Easter. I might as well stay all day. I was toying with the idea of packing up and crashing in the car for a couple of hours and fishing it tonight. Um, but I'll probably do that, I think, either Monday night or Tuesday night. Come here, um, get down, start fishing about four or five o'clock and fishing into darkness and through the night. Get down about five o'clock. Yeah, we just cast out again. Got the tiniest little white in on there, look at that. Bait size, probably what this guy was after. Nice big dogfish. There's no nasal flaps there, so you see it's a doggy. Right, we'll get a little white back first. to this one. Okay guys, it's about four o'clock. Oh, hang on. I was going to say, I'm going to have one more cast. I've just refreshed both ones, put them out. I've got worm and squid on that one on the top hook. And then... Top snood. Keep missing it. Ooh, every time I come back
Yeah. Yeah, worm with squid on the top too. <clears throat> Mac with a squid on the bottom one. Just put this bait out, big bait. Right. Put a big bit of uh, herring. Got a big strip of herring on there. Squid. I'll just cast that one out as far as I can. Gonna give it this bite and then pack up and go. So yeah, thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoyed it. About a dozen whiting in the end, and three dogfish. So not all, not everything's lost. So decent fish. It's fish, fish well in patches, but not all day. Um, it's just starting to pick up now, actually. Number 13, can't hang it on 13. Yeah, no, I have to get the discord on that one. Anyway, if you catch any more fish, I'll get back to you. If not, glad you enjoyed the video. Tight lines, we'll see you again in another one. Cheerio, guys.